All right, today's video, I'm gonna be working on the passenger door. Um, the last time I worked on the truck, it's been a while. Uh, I've had a lot of distractions lately with uh, remodeling some in the shop and in the house and everything, but uh, we're back at it. I don't know if you remember last time I worked on the driver's side door and um, I've got it bonded up now, but all that, all that patch came out good. That only needed a, a corner patch inside and out. This one, as you can see, is uh, quite a mess. The, uh, somebody had patched the inner door uh, panel on the bottom and uh, cut off the flange. And they made a, a outer patch as well. But the whole door bottom looks uh, very, very ratty looking. Uh, so I bought a uh, inner door bottom patch panel and uh, I don't know how much of it I'm going to use. Uh, also, I've got uh, the outer door skin on the corner here that's bad. And I can't imagine as, uh, as rusted out as the inner door is at that flange that the bottom wouldn't be uh, compromised as well. But I'm going to first try to cut out the spot wells and peel back that lip and uh, cut off some of this door bottom and see what I have on the outer skin. But first I'm going to, like I did on the other door, make uh, some reference marks. I'm gonna come up here and um, nine and three sixteenths inches is what it is on this patch panel from the uh, bottom to the top edge. So I'm gonna put a nine and three sixteenths mark and also an eight inch reference mark too. Um, and that'll give me something to work off on this bottom. And I'm also going to do a template on the side for the contour on both sides and also the contour on the bottom in case that, that changes as well. Okay, I'm going to put a mark um, at 9 and 3 sixteenths of an inch, which is the height of that um, patch panel, and also at 8 inches because I'll probably be, tr be trimming it down. I have this really thin, flexible 48 inch straight edge. And I've got these neovidium magnets. But watch your fingers with those things. They'll hold it in place. It's good right there, actually. I'll put a scribe. I'll put Dicom uh, layout die on here makes it easier to see and a sharp scribe get a good mark and then i'm also going to do it at eight inches okay this uh door had the electric window actuator in it and uh the way it was installed it was bolted to the inner door skin and there's a hole for couple of other than light and a, another doohickey. Anyhow, I need to uh, transfer the, that pattern uh, onto a sheet so that I could put it onto the new door skin. I've just got some brown craft paper and I'm gonna line it up to one of my reference marks here. Okay, I've got those magnets holding this craft paper to those 9 and 3 sixteenths reference marks and I'm gonna put a uh, a witness mark here for the uh, lateral location and I'm just going to use the ball end of a ball peen hammer to kind of trace out all the uh, all the openings that were in this uh, this inner door this will let me transfer those if I need on the uh, on the new panel Okay, here's my template. Um, as you can see, you can see the holes pretty clearly, and uh, I'll be able to transfer those. This is the lower corner of the door on the outside. Uh, this was patched at one time, I guess, and uh, I know, of course, I got to replace this part, but I'm not sure about the rest. Uh, we'll see when I pull that flange back. But I've got the door marked with my reference marks at 12 inches up. Uh, just like I did on the other door, and also made a template for the for each side so I could match those uh, profiles. Um, 
same with that side. So we'll all get to cutting uh, and see what's inside. I found the spot welds on the flange here and I drilled them out. I center punched them and drilled them out. Uh, there's not too many on here. And then I put a mark where I'm gonna cut uh, the bottom of the inner door uh, skin here. And uh, I'll cut that loose uh, along the bottom and then I'll try to pry this uh, flange up and see how the outer skin looks. got that door bottom all cut off and uh, I opened up the uh, corner here where the inner frame was. There's some holes in that frame. I'm going to uh, repair that part. I'm going to sandblast it and uh, clean it up and, and do some structural repair there. That's never going to be seen, but I'll, I'll make it stronger. And uh, I, I was hoping I would be able to use most of this uh, outer door skin. But uh, I opened up the lip to check it out where the uh, flange was rolled over. And there's a lot of pinholes uh, in here and it's really very thin. So I'm going to uh, cut the hole with it. But I, have a, I do have a patch panel that I had bought before. All right, here's where I use my 12 inch reference mark from the bottom uh, to establish a horizontal line that I'm going to cut. Uh, so it'll be six inches up six inches down, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and zip that off. Okay, I've got this patch panel trimmed uh, to put on the bottom of the door using these reference marks to 12 inches on, on the bottom of the panel itself. And uh, as you can see, when I, when I cut this, uh, the old bottom off, it just lost all its shape. It just, it was originally domed out a little bit and, and it just flopped in. You can see the difference on the patch panel. There's a big gap here. So I'm gonna have to use, uh, you know, make sure I get it clamped on a level uh, outside surface before I start tack welding it. I'm gonna use some of those edge clamps. Uh, here, I'll show you. Okay, this is one of the edge clamps I'm talking about. This is something I bought off of eBay, but Eastwood sells them and other places. It's got a 40 thousandths thick uh, plate between here, uh, between this channel, and this little crossbar goes underneath. So the idea is it slides in at your butt weld, and you have to be able to access the backside to get that crossbar in and then tighten it up and it pulls uh, both panels flush. Uh, that's the idea. Uh, I've got, I got uh, like a half dozen or so I'll put across here plus some deep clamps and uh, see if I can get it straight. The other problem I have is besides crowning, uh, you know, having to have a crown this way and it flopped in, um, it also like droops over here, so when you put these together, I've already tried it with one of those uh, clamps, and I'll show you later. It pulls it up, but then it, it caves in in the middle, so I need to do something to, to pull it uh, up tight. On the inner part of this door skin, it's got uh, some kind of dum-dum or something back there to help deaden the sound, and it's caked on in several places, and uh, well, I was able to scrape off, but there's also uh, surface rust and all that. So I, I want to make this smooth on the back side so when I use these pinch clamps here um, it has a flat surface, something that's parallel with the uh, patch panel. Um, of course, the inner door skin is kind of in my way for conventionally using a, a grinding wheel to get to. Uh, so I'm going to try something a little different. Um, 
Don't try this at home. This is just something stupid I'm going to do. I've got my four-inch angle grinder that, that I use for a cutoff wheel, and I mounted a four-inch 50-grit uh, disc on it uh, upside down, so it's on the upper surface. So I'm going to make sure I'm wearing heavy gloves and keeping my hands free. Probably be a good idea to put a guard on here as well, but that'll allow me to come in from the back side and grind. Now, you couldn't do this with a flap disc because the rotation of the disc itself will actually be backwards and it wouldn't work right. But I'm going to try this off camera. Uh, you know, I got a nice camera phone. I don't want to get blood all over it when I screw up here. I'll be, I'll be back in a bit. All right, that actually sanded the back of that really well. Uh, it only took uh, a couple minutes and I got uh, all the rust out. I used a mirror to look underneath and uh, it's nice and clean. But I did learn a couple things, you know, uh, number one, that uh, those latex gloves, medical gloves, are no substitute for leather work gloves. I'm just messing with you. I'm fine. I've got a bunch of these pinch clamps holding the bottom uh, patch panel to the bottom of the door. Um, I've got an alignment problem with the outer surface. If you run a straight edge across there, you can see that uh, there's quite a gap there. Even when you pull this down, it maintains a gap. The problem is, you know, that there's a, uh, I mentioned it earlier, it, it cups down here uh, quite a bit. And uh, this has a little crown to it as well. So I'm gonna re-clamp this with a, with a deep-throated clamp and a straight edge on top, and I'm gonna use a, a piece of uh, copper or brass on the bottom to pull that up. Hopefully that brings everything in. Okay, I have this uh, piece of uh, scrap brass I'm gonna stick uh, underneath where the butt weld is and uh, this piece of aluminum bar stock on top. I'm gonna clamp it together with this deep-throated clamp and that should bring things into alignment. Also, when I tack near there, it'll all give a chill area on the tack weld so it doesn't uh, warp up so bad. Should be able to see it come in tighter here in a second. Okay, the alignment looks good. Uh, a couple places the gaps are a little wider than I had wanted, but uh, I'm going to clamp this uh, a little bit better and then start tacking it and keeping the welds cool with some air, jumping around spot to spot. I'm not going to weld it fully up yet. I'm going to uh, just tack it in a few places and then I'm going to work on the inner door in case I need to cut this loose for some reason. Okay, I've got this tacked in now. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I was using this piece of brass underneath the welds and clamping it up and moving it along as I go. It served two purposes besides uh, clamping it between this uh, piece of aluminum and uh, the brass to, to straighten it out. The brass and the aluminum both act like a heat sink and kept the weld from getting too hot. So I moved it around uh, side to side uh, so I'm going to finish that up, grind it, uh, probably have to do a little hammer and dolly work on it uh, to get it uh, just right. But I'm, I'm pleased it didn't warp up very much at all. Uh, I think I'm going to cut this video off about here because uh, it's getting pretty long already. Next time we will work on the uh, inner door bottom repair. And uh, I appreciate you all coming by to stop for a visit, and I'll see you next time.